Now we focus on classifying them by angles. And if you're not quite comfortable with angles and identifying what they look like and uh, properties of acute, right, obtuse, etc., I would suggest going back to the videos from back in the day or your notes from back in the day and kind of brushing up on that. So acute refers to angles that are less than 90. That means in this case, all of these angles are less than 90. Now, why would that make sense? Because the triangle sum theorem says that all the angles add up to equal 180 degrees. And how many angles does a triangle have? Three. So you can't have three angles that are equal to 90 because then 90 plus 90 plus 90 is 270 and triangles don't add up to more than 180, right? They actually add up exactly to 180. So it makes sense that all three of these angles could be less than 90 because they all three got to add up to 180 degrees. Triangle man, triangle man. We've seen right angles before. So if a triangle has a right angle, that means this angle is equal to 90 degrees. Triangle man hates person man. This also helps us out a bit because that means that this angle plus this angle combined, right? They add up to 90 degrees because then this right angle plus the other two would add up to 180 total. Obtuse is going to be a wider angle like this, meaning that this angle is more than 90 degrees. So this one might be more than 90 degrees. But that, that forces the other two angles to have to be acute. So an obtuse angle will have, sorry, an obtuse triangle will have one obtuse angle and two acute angles. And here's a happy accident. I didn't mean to write equilateral because equilateral refers to sides. However, we could say that this is equilateral and equiangular. Equiangular means the angles are all congruent. So we're not going to put dashes, we're going to put curves. So this is congruent to this one, it's congruent to this one. So we say that these angles are congruent to each other. Now let's do some quick mental math here. Because if all three of these angles are exactly the same and all three of those angles add up to 180 degrees, what is the measurement of each of these angles in an equiangular triangle? Well, they all have to be the same and all three of them add up to 180. So each of these angles must be 60 degrees. 60 plus 60 plus 60 is 180. Try it. You would do 180 divided by 3, right? So when we do problems involving triangles and angles, we're going to need to know a couple of things. But the most important thing is recognizing the triangle sum theorem, that all three of these angles add up to 180. Because this triangle is equiangular, that means all three of these angles are congruent to each other. Now, there's a couple of quick ways to do this. If you're comfortable with what we talked about, how an equal angular triangle, all the angles are 60 degrees, we could simply take, for example, angle E and set it equal to 60 degrees and then divide, solve for X and I get X equals 10. And of course, if that's 60, this should also be 60 degrees and such with this one and, show this, and this one we've already shown that it's 60. Now, of course, if, if you want to do this, you could, right? You could, if, if you're not sure about it, plug the 10 in here. 7 times 10 is 70, minus 10 is 60. What if I plug the 10 in here instead? 5 times 10 is 50, plus 10 is 60. So we proved it. If you're not comfortable with that, well, you could just take one of these angles and the, one of the other angles and set them equal to each other if you want to do some math. And then you go ahead and solve for X. And move this over. Divide by 2. And you still get the same value for X, which is 10. And I plug them into all of these bad boys. And I get 60 degrees no matter what. So we could do this mathematically the harder way. Or we could do this conceptually the quicker way, whatever you prefer, as long as it's honest and correct. 
So to summarize, and you might want to pause because I may have gone over that a bit fast, but feel free to go back and watch it if you need to. To summarize, we found that x equals 10, and each angle was 60 degrees. Ah, an isosceles triangle. So incidentally, for an isosceles triangle, we said that the sides were congruent, right? But if these sides are congruent, then we say the base angles are congruent to each other. So, we're proposing that this angle is the same as this angle. We need to be careful because the only triangles that we know anything about for sure are right triangles have a 90 degree angle and that equal angular triangles, each of the angles is 60 degrees. Otherwise, we do not know anything else. So, in this case with isosceles, we don't know the answers yet. The concept that we do know is that these two base angles are congruent to each other. So we can go ahead and solve for them. I'm going to move this x over here. I'm doing that because I want to get a positive x. I don't want to get a negative x and make more work for myself. I add 10 to both sides. I get x equals 40. 40 degrees, Mr. Over? No, x is 40. So that means I need to go ahead. And these are two my two angles. And I can substitute into them the 40 that I just found. And this 40 plus 30 gives me a 70 degrees. This is 80 minus 10, which is 70 degrees. Oh, that's very nice. Very nice indeed. So this is 70 degrees. This is 70 degrees. What about this guy? Oh, it's 40 degrees. And if you're not sure about that, you could take these two angles, add them up, subtract from 180, and guess what you'll get? 40 degrees. It's nice working with triangles and their angles because we can always fall back on the triangle sum theorem. As you progress in this class and you move on to Algebra 2, Trigonometry, the triangle sum theorem is still going to be very important. Even in calculus, it's very important. For your summary, if a triangle is not isosceles or equal angular, how can the triangle sum theorem be used?